Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. This is Josh. Hi. And today we're talking about <laughs> control horns. I was wondering where you're going with that. That's pretty impressive, man. Thanks. So why are you making that noise? Because because it's like I was playing a horn. Oh, so, control yeah. horns. So do you know what control horns are? The little plastic things. Little plastic things. Yeah, you, they hook up to your servos and they pull uh, the control surfaces about. Cool. Let's talk about them. What do you right, say? let's do it, yeah. Now, there's certain things you gotta keep in mind with control horns when putting them on. You can build the most beautiful plane in the world, but if you put your control horns on wrong, you're not gonna get the best flight experience. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, I always wondered back in the past why sometimes I could roll really good to the left, not to the right, and there's good reasons for it. Control so, horns. So let's just start with that, okay? How's All that right. sound? Basically, if you put your whole control horn in, in the wrong location, it'll turn more one way than the other. Mm -hmm. And that's a bad thing. What you wanna do is whenever you put your control horns on, you wanna basically line up your hinge line with your holes. And when you do that, that'll give you the proper throw in both directions. Gotcha. So always keep your hinge line and your holes lined up. All right, this is one of the most simple ones here, and this is the one you're gonna see the most often, uh, in my opinion. This one uh, here? That one right there, yep, okay. you got it. Very, very simple. All you simply need to do is you just take an exacto knife, cut your slot there, mm -hmm. shove it down through, obviously keeping in mind where your hole is, Right. and then shove it through there, and then flip it over on the back there. Okay. Look at that, oh. you got a little keeper. You just push yeah. that sucker down in there, little and cap. Yeah. Yeah, make sure you follow up with a bead of glue on both sides okay. of that just to, to lock it in solid. Right. They're, they're made so they grip but uh, it's good for some, you know, security. Stability. Stability, yeah, you okay. don't want to lose a control horn in midair because if you lose a control horn, guess what you lose? You lose control. Exactly. Out of control. Exactly, mm -hmm. very good brother. Now, say you don't have one of those. I don't have one of those. But you want one of those. I want one. You basically, grab your scissors, grab some 32nd inch or uh, some 16th inch wood, uh -huh. you're good to go. Just cut it out? Just cut it out with scissors. There's no holes Just, in it. Yep, and here's the nice thing. There's no holes, you notice yeah. that, huh? Yeah. Well, basically, you make the holes. Here's the cool thing. Uh -huh. If you guys out there that don't know this already, the farther away from the control surface you make the linkage, the less throw you have. The closer together, the more throw you have. So basically, say you're flying a 3D airplane, okay? Mm -hmm. You're picturing it? I'm your flying eyes, a 3D airplane. Your eyes okay, aren't closed. I'm sorry, All right. There you I got go. It. Okay, now you go, don't open yours. If you're flying a 3D airplane, put your hole down closer to the hinge line. It'll okay. give you more extreme deflection. Yeah. If you're flying something like a, uh, a slow flyer, mm -hmm. like a trainer, okay. you can put it in the middle or farther away. So the luxury is, see that little drill, drill, thumb drill there? Um, if you don't have one, get one. They're very, very useful. Basically, once you know your application, what you need with your throws, just drill a hole. Just make sure the hole is in line with your hinge line and you're good to go. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the one that's the most aggravating for me and probably the most aggravating for you. Uh, and it involves multiple holes and I always get them crooked. And there's a simple way to fix that. Go ahead and line up with those holes just to show the people where it is. All right, once you get it lined up with the hinge and you want it, go ahead and stick your uh, first hole through there. Okay. And then without moving the control horn, stick your second hole in there. Punch. Yep, now leave it in there. Punch. Now go ahead and pick up your control surface, everything all together. Okay. Now punch all the way through without sticking yourself. Be very careful. Be very careful. Right, we're through. Yep, now leave it there. Okay. All right. Now here's the beautiful thing. With that in there, you have both holes established. Your second hole needs a screw now. So okay. what you can do basically Aha. is you can start threading your screw through there. Gotcha. And your backing plate will receive it. And then if you look over here, slide that around there. See that right there? Uh huh. Uh -huh. Let it receive it. You're right. keeping your other one from moving. Crafty. Pull that out, slide your other screw in, you're good to go. Now, brother, we've talked about control horns. Mm -hmm. What about control rods? What about them? They connect to the control horns. Of course. You know, the control rods connected to the control horn. Yeah, yeah. from the servo. Yeah, you got it, you got it. Now, you know what? For you guys out there to fly park flyers, there's a couple of really, really simple things you can do. Uh, one's a Z-Bend, which is uh, this little guy right here. Yeah, it's kind of uh, hard to see. Yeah, it it's is really, really small. It is kind of small, isn't it? So you know what? I worked on a little something. You did, huh? Yeah. Oh, a look bigger, at that! A bigger example. Nice. That, that'd take a really big control horn. Yeah. Yeah. I pulled off a really big plane. All right. Well, Z-Bend, right there. Basically, the control horn fastens right here, and it moves it just perfectly. Okay. okay? Right. This is called a modified Z-Bend. Mm -hmm. You want to guess what that's for? It's for those hard to reach control surfaces. Those really hard to reach control surfaces. Say you have a control surface, you have to basically adjust in and out. The nice thing is, is if you do this properly, you can take your pliers and bend this out and the spring loading will always keep itself centered. You don't want to use this on high loading on control surfaces that have a high load, mm -hmm. but it's really, really useful for slow flyers, park flyers, things like that, that you have to adjust a lot. You yeah. can remove it and take it on. With this guy, you have to pop it off from the servo and unlace it. Right. Yep. Nice, brother. That's that really cool. Thanks. Well, well, what do you think about it? You got well, it? Yeah, I think it's very important, obviously. Yeah. You don't want to lose control. Yeah, that'd be bad. I yeah. mean, you could use it for an excuse on like, why you crash, you know, my control horns weren't right, but yeah. you know, eventually that gets old. Uh, yeah, I've used it a few times, it has gotten old. All right, well, thanks you guys for watching. We want to thank Hobby King for sponsoring this episode, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. All right, we got to put these back. Um, yeah, you cut those out of this waterline, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, it was underneath the sink. Um, we got to well, put Well, that's because it's the fridge. Okay.